Okay, in this video I'm going to cover the installation of the charging unit for the, this is the original FreeSky X-Lite radio. Originally you couldn't uh, plug in a USB for charging the batteries that are inside here. You'd have to actually pull the batteries out and charge them externally. Now there's a little board that I got. It was about 10 bucks and you can pick one up from Banggood. It comes with some wires. It's fairly straightforward in terms of what needs to connect to what. There's some nice diagrams. I'll show you some pictures as well. And I'm just going to cover a few tips on how to put it in here. It's, um, actually I already have it in here. It wasn't too complicated. There was one thing that kind of uh, made things a little bit more complicated for me is that once I got inside and took, uh, there's basically, uh, you, well, once you open it up and you take the back cover off, there's going to be two screws here on the bottom for uh, a little plastic piece that holds a board on and uh, you're actually going to attach the charging into the back side of that board. But once you lift that off, you have to, um, once you install the charging board, when you put the this piece back down, um, there's a little capacitor that's about right here on the main board that's on the inside of the radio that sticks straight up, and you actually have to make that, uh, actually remove that capacitor and lay it flat. I'm told that that is probably just for these early unit radios for reviewers, so maybe a lot of you don't have that, but if you do, then you're going to have to desolder that capacitor and then solder little wires on there and then lay the capacitor flat. So that's the only really major complication. Not all of you guys are probably going to experience that. In terms of the, getting this open, it's actually pretty straightforward. So you just take the little caps off and so it's on, it's on Pop this off here, and I'll take the battery out. And there's going to be some various videos out there on how to maybe use like a plastic tool to get inside here to basically have to, there's some clips uh, on the side over here and here. You have to remove those. And there's going to be some clips over here. So um, some of you are going to have screws in the back that you're going to remove. You're going to remove this, this screw here on, on the far outside and also this one here. You don't need to mess with these screws here. These these I left alone. Just, uh, I didn't actually do anything with this. But you got to remove the two outside screws if your radio happens to have. Some of them don't. Some of the early you know, units don't have that. But this one does. So you got to remove those two screws. And then you have to separate the whole back side from the front. And... To get that to happen, as I said, there's clips over here on the side and on this side over here. Some videos have suggested um, trying it from the outside. That didn't work so well for me. I actually was able to get this open by uh, opening up the one, the clips on the inside here. So I used like a little flat tool like this little, um, little tool here. And I just kind of slid it in between uh, basically either here. It's going to be hard to see, but this little right here, or right here. So I'm going to stick this tool inside here, and then twist it, and that's going to cause a little bit of separation, and then maybe we can get like a plastic tool or something in there to further separate it. And I found that, that popping these clips was easier. So uh, once I got this section open, I opened up this section over here, uh, the outside clips uh, were then able to... Uh, pop off much easier and actually once once you pop off these clips on the inside the whole back cover it comes off pretty easily now you're you're you obviously you know every grade is gonna be a little bit different so you might have a different experience it might be easier to pop off the clips on the outside versus the inside etc but yeah you should be able to take the back off without damaging the plastic in any way so you can see there's no no damage anywhere so yeah, that that was not a problem and then so once you remove the back there's going to be a smaller board here in the center. Along, that's going to be uh, mounted to a plastic, like a mounting board. And there's going to be two screws here and here. That you're going to want to pop those off to get to the other side of the of the where you're going to mount the actual charging board. And um, again, if you run that problem with the capacitor sticking straight up, you're going to pretty much have to take the entire radio apart, unfortunately. So um, this is probably not going to be for those of you guys that are a little bit worried about damaging your radio um, or not experienced with soldering. You might be a little bit intimidated by this. So just be, be aware of that. You may want to reconsider doing this project if you're not too confident with 
taking apart stuff and putting them back together. Um, one of the tips and tricks I would recommend is as you're taking the radio apart, take photos of everything with like your cell phone and keep a record of where everything is plugged in. It's pretty hard to mess up the plugs. There's a bunch of plugs all over like uh, for the gimbals and stuff. You're going to have to remove those from all the boards to so take all the boards out. Uh, but they're all um, they're all keyed, so you can't put them in backwards. And if you have photos of everything, you should be able to remember where all the wiring goes and everything like that. Now, if it does turn out that you have to remove the main center board, the ones underneath, you will probably need to remove the battery holders as well. There's going to be there's actually two of them, obviously, on one on each side here, and there's going to be a small plug. So there's going to be a small screw over here that's holding the battery holder to the front of the of the radio. Unscrew that and then unplug the battery holder from the main board and then this little holder will, will pop off if you take that out. And so I'm going to do that on both sides. And then there's going to be six screws on the main board, two uh, on top, two in the center, and then two on the bottom. Remove all six of those and then you should be able to take the main board out. There is a small, I think it's a haptic feedback uh, vibration unit over here on this side. You need to remove that as well because that's soldered directly onto the main board here. Um, that's not on a plug, but all the other things will you should be able to unplug. And then the last thing about the main board is that the LCD screen here is on a little ribbon cable that is on the underside of the main board, which is going to be tricky to get out. It is, it's on a on a one of those little um, uh, little circuit board circuit board holders. You're gonna have to slide that up to release the ribbon cable, so you gotta be really careful you don't damage that. And because it's kind of in an awkward position, that is probably the thing that took me the longest out of uh, everything here to actually complete the project. I mean, overall, it only took me about 30 minutes with soldering and everything, but that one was pretty tricky because it is in an awkward position. And of course, you only need to do that if you have to remove the capacitor. So if you don't have to remove the capacitor and re reposition that, then yeah, you don't have to take these battery holders out, you don't have to take the uh, little ribbon cable out, so you don't have to worry about any of that stuff. Um, the only thing you have to worry about is taking that main, the, the, the little circuit board off, uh, the, basically the one that's above the main board. You're going to want to take those two screws off and flip, you know, obviously unplug all the, the plugs uh, from the, uh, the main board, and then you're going to flip it over, and then you're going to take the charging board, and if, obviously you're going to want to solder on all the little wires, and uh, I'll show you a little diagram here of all the uh, where the wires go, um, pretty straightforward. The LED is optional, you don't have to do that if you don't want to, um, but it, it's nice because then when you do plug in the USB cable for charging, it does light up blue, and then when it's done charging, it light turns off, you know that it's done. So once you've uh, soldered up the charging board itself with all the, basically there's going to be a, a yellow 2S wire, a white 1S wire, and then you have the 5 volt red and the black is ground, and then the two wires for the LEDs. You're going to uh, mount that board to the other side of the board that's on here, and with the three screws that are included. I don't know why they included three and not four, it's kind of odd, but three is enough to screw those in. There's actually screw holes already there for that board, as if it was designed for it originally, but for whatever reason they didn't want to include that. And so you screw that on, and then you're going to reroute the cables down out through the bottom here, because then you're going to solder them onto the main board. So once all those wires are out, you go ahead and put that, um, you know, flip the board back over so that the charging board's you know, hidden underneath the, the outside board. And then go ahead and plug everything back in, um, all your cables that you unplugged. And then you before you screw down that uh, charging board, auxiliary board, and the little plastic mounting thing, you're going to, before you screw those two screws back on, you're going to want to solder on all of the wires from the charging board. So there's going to be uh, on the uh, far left, lower left of the main board, there's going to be a uh, 1S and a 2S little solder pad. You're going to obviously solder on the uh, 1S to the white, the white wire to the 1S solder pad and the yellow wire to the 2S solder pad. There's going to be a small solder pad for ground. Obviously black goes there. And then the very most difficult part is going to be the 5 volt ground for the USB. There, It's going to be on the outside leg of one of the capacitors on the main board, as you see circled here in the photo. That is going to be a very tricky solder job. So you're going to need a very fine tip solder and uh, steady hands and make sure you don't get solder all over the place, otherwise you're going to short circuit stuff. Uh, I recommend high temperature 6337 solder and get in there and get it out very quickly. 
um, and you should be okay. So if you're quick with the iron, you have good skills with that, that shouldn't be too much of a problem. I, I didn't have any issues with it, but I think for some people that's a very tiny part. It could be, present some problems for some people. Okay, so once you've uh, completed all the soldering, go ahead and uh, push all your wires up and out of the way. Make sure that your gimbals can still freely move. You can check that um, if any wires are catching and you don't want to close the radio and have that. Otherwise, you'll have to reopen the radio. And uh, then the LED, I have it uh, basically uh, around the position where these pins are here on the inside of the radio so that when it lights up, you can see a little a faint blue light so you can see it when it's charging. You want to position that LED right around this opening here so you can see that light. Otherwise, if it's buried in too far, you're not going to be able to see that light. So that it'll kind of uh, have <laughs> pointless to have the LED back there because you won't be able to see what's going on with it. So then once that's uh, all set up, make sure that you, you know, double check all your wiring, make sure you haven't uh, shorted anything, etc. Make sure everything looks good. And, uh, you know, give it a try. See if um, when you plug it in, uh, you can actually uh, put these caps on with the batteries without the back on. See if it's actually charging with, if the light turns on. Um, and then, you know, obviously you want to check and make sure that's working, that you, you did the, all the work properly before you put the cover back on because then you know, obviously getting the cover back off can be kind of a hassle. That's about it really. Uh, I put the cover back on, put the batteries back in, put the caps back on and um, yeah it's as I said I already have this in here. I'm going to put this back together and we'll go ahead and I'll plug in a USB cable. So I'm, they recommend something that's uh, giving off 5 volts and 2 amps and you can see there there's a faint blue light, so it's charging. And for whatever reason, this charging board has a slight sort of a hum or hiss to it. I'm not sure if you guys can hear that on the camera microphone, but I can definitely hear it. Not a big deal. Uh, sometimes that happens with these charging boards. They do make a little bit of noise. I haven't had any issues with anything burning out or anything like that, so it's probably not that big of a deal. For whatever reason, that charging board is making a little bit of a coming sound. So that's pretty much it. So, you know, as again, I, as I recommended earlier, um, if you don't uh, have a lot of electronics knowledge or are concerned about taking things apart and putting them back together, this could be a project that you might want to reconsider. Um, but if uh, you're okay with, you know, basic soldering projects and you're okay with taking things apart and putting them back together, shouldn't be too hard. Most people could probably get this done in 30 minutes to an hour. Um, yeah, it's not, not terribly difficult, I would say. For an experienced person, difficulty level is probably going to be, uh, I would say, a 3 or a 4. If you're inexperienced, uh, it could be as high as a 10. Uh, could be pretty tough, especially trying to get the radio open if you've never done anything like that before. That's pretty much it. It's pretty straightforward. Um, and it's like, you know, if you have the experience to get a part in like that and do the soldering uh, for 10 bucks, it's not bad. And I think it's totally worth it. So you have to, you know, take the batteries out. That, that was always a hassle with this radio. I never liked that about the, the original model. Of course, there's the uh, the new FreeSky X-Lite Pro. I have some videos on this one as well, as well as the upgrades to uh, doing D16 mode in this one. So check out that uh, playlist of those videos and I'll have more of those on that one. This one, obviously the Pro, <laughs> as I, meant, I I guess I didn't mention, this one already has the charging circuit in there. So you just plug in the USB and it charges the batteries inside this one. So you're good to go on that one. No major project on the Pro, but if you have the happen to have the non-Pro, the original X-Lite, then yeah, get this board and put it in and you're good to go on USB charging. Anyway guys, I hope the, this video has been helpful. Let me know if you have any questions and I'll talk to you guys in the next one.